Hey everyone, so we're back in the shop this week and we're starting to work on another really, really big conference table. This will probably end up setting the record for the biggest resin pour that we've ever done. Uh, our previous biggest resin pour, which was our first YouTube video ever, so you can go check that out. That was for Cadillac, it was almost 200 liters. This will probably end up being just over 200 liters because of how thick it is. Um, but right now, Dennis is taking off the high spots on the TNT here. And then we're going to get both sides flat, we'll debark it, and we'll get it upstairs in the mold. Uh, but before we pour this one, we're actually also going to be working on the tables for JB Smooth. So we're going to start off by pouring his coffee table, and then probably next week we'll end up pouring his dining table. Sagar and I just finished mixing up uh, 60 liters here. This is the smoky gray that you can see here. So JB actually wanted a really dark color, so that's what we've got from there. Nice smoky gray. You'll see the metallic more once we pour it in. Um, I just broke my goggles. Great. Um, but this, we calculated about 50 liters in total that we needed for this and we just rounded up to 60 because it will divide easily between the buckets that we're using. Uh, and again, we are using our Black Forest Deep Cast, that's the product for this. Now, if, if you're going past the 2 inch recommendation, or even if you are only pouring it 2 inches, you're going to get much better results if you use a fan and an air conditioner. So we've got the whole room cooled, we have an aluminum table, uh, and we're going to put fans on this after, and that's going to allow us to do this full 3 inch thick pour. So I'll fix my goggles, and then we'll go ahead and pour this in. So it's about 24 hours later since we did the pour for, uh, for JB Smooth. So here it is here. And first thing I'm going to show everyone is the temperature. So if you look, temperature of the epoxy is about 22 degrees right now. Uh, that's really good. For, for the actual temperature of the epoxy itself, we try and keep it below 30 degrees. That way you're going to get the best results, uh, meaning that it's not going to cure too quickly. It's going to stay liquid for a long period of time, allowing bubbles to come up. Uh, like this one actually, if I just touch it, I'll show you. Still liquid, as you can see, I don't want to dip my finger right in, but it's still quite soft. Now, if this were, if you weren't cooling this, or if it was another kind of epoxy that you couldn't pour as thick with, this would already be rock hard, whereas this is still soft. Uh, we don't have to seal the live edges because we've slowed the cure. And that's something that we really want to make, make clear how important it is to all of you who are actually going to be trying this yourself. Or, exact, or specifically using our resin, uh, cooling it is going to be the most important thing you can do to get better results. Uh, we air condition our whole room, so we sit around 16 degrees in the room. Uh, we obviously use fans, so just a big fan like this. These are best, they're gonna dissipate the most heat, but smaller fans will work too. Uh, even just a fan is gonna make a huge difference without air conditioning. And then finally, the, the final thing that we do to really make it all work is we have an aluminum mold so on underneath this plastic sheet there's a sheet of aluminum and we actually have an air conditioner right underneath that you can see blowing cold air on the bottom of this sheet to dissipate all the heat so by doing those three things uh, the cooled aluminum mold the air condition room and the fans we can take a product that like our product here is only good for two inches without that we've taken it all the way to six inches so cooling is super super important I cannot stress that enough something exciting uh, for this week's video that we're going to be announcing is actually a giveaway here on YouTube so one of our earlier videos we did a giveaway it was kind of like um, Instagram controls our shop for, for did we do a giveaway for that one mm -hmm. yeah we did do a giveaway just trying to remember yeah so we let you guys pick all the all the things for a piece and then we we gave it away 
This time we're just going to do a Halloween theme giveaway. So I'm going to build a little mold right here. Uh, I'm going to kind of teach you guys a little bit about how to build smaller molds if you're doing smaller pours. I'm going to pick some off cuts that we have all behind me here. We're going to do kind of like an orange colored pour because we don't get to do those very often. And then next week's video will come out a day early. It'll actually release on Thursday on Halloween and we'll announce uh, which one of you have won. So all you're going to have to do to enter to win this is just leave a comment below and we are going to pick one of the people who comments to win this piece. So we just came over to our off cuts. We're going to do this piece of walnut burl here. Uh, you can see really nice live edge so we're probably going to leave it a little bit clear and you can actually kind of see some of the grain on the back edge too. So we'll go clean this thing up right now. We'll debark it and then we'll get it thrown in the mold. Again, we apologize for sort of the lack of room here. It's kind of messy, not a lot of space, but we want to get this pour done. Um, what I essentially did is I took four pieces of MDF that were coated in tuck tape. Tuck tape is what's going to allow the epoxy actually not to stick to this. Uh, I screwed everything together. I drilled a pilot hole first so I didn't get as much splitting on the MDF. Still ended up getting a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, then I secured everything down with blocks, so I've got this strong back going across the top and then I have these blocks underneath that are pushing the mold down. Then I have a block on my piece of wood with some wedges that are holding the, the actual slab down. And then I went around all of the outside and the inside with silicone. We used the Acfix, yeah you can see that, the Acfix uh, 915N. So this stuff I like quite a bit because it doesn't dry brittle at all. Um, I'll show you some of the silicone from yesterday, like right here, or even on the outside. Like you can see this stuff is still kind of nice and gummy. Here's another piece. It's still squishy and soft, so that means that it's not going to crack uh, after you do your pour and you're going to get less leaks. So the Acfix works really good for that. Again, outside and inside, so I'm going to let this dry up for a little bit now. Uh, probably in the time it takes us to mix our epoxy, uh, this silicone will be cured and then we'll do the pour. So we are just getting ready to mix up our epoxy now and I realized that these are the last buckets that we have left. These are actually uh, chill epoxy buckets. Now that brings up a very good point because we had two comments on our last video if our new epoxy was just chill rebranded and the answer is no it is not. Uh, we actually ended up having a bad experience with chill. If you follow us on Instagram, you probably know what that is, but for those of you who don't, I will kind of quickly summarize what happened. So we began having issues with the chill, not reaching full hardness. It was taking like eight weeks or so to, to fully cure. Um, and they were kind of denying that it was an issue with their product. They were saying it was an issue with our techniques. Uh, however, then they informed us that they were changing the formula. So when we got this new formula and tested it out, we did a pour and got the exact opposite result. It completely cracked and fractured and exploded on us. And when we, we thought that they would have supported us because they obviously sent us some bad faulty product and they would have covered us for our losses. But when we told them about our failure, they, they thought it was an act of sabotage to try and somehow get them and that we completely fabricated the result. Which is not true because that was a custom commission for a client. They had picked out those slabs of quilted maple. They were in love with the slabs. And it was actually kind of hard for them to accept the fact that a faulty product was used. So definitely not fabricated. And we were stuck with all of this uh, unusable chill product on our hands, which we assumed that they would have taken back. And when we asked them if we could return the faulty epoxy, they said, yes, you can on one condition. If you sign this non-disclosure agreement to agree to never speak about our product, your bad experiences, or anyone at our company again. Um, we obviously did not like that and clearly did not sign that because here I am today speaking to you guys about this. So it would have saved us about $10,000 to sign that non-disclosure agreement and send the product back. 
but it was honestly more valuable for us to be able to be honest to all of you guys uh, and share our experience so you don't end up with the same issues that we had. Uh, pretty quickly here in the future we're going to do a video going to the dump and actually properly disposing of the chill because we have to have a hazardous waste disposal for that so you'll see that coming up soon. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to clear the air on what the deal is with chill. Today for the pour that we're doing, it's, it's just a little one, but we're still gonna use our Black Forest Deep. Uh, the deep is gonna be best for anything where you're pouring above like a quarter inch or a half inch thick. You can use our coat resin to do very small uh, castings, but we just like to use the deep, slowest cure, you'll get the least amount of bubbles and the strongest bond by using this. Okay, so we're adding our pigments. Uh, first thing, we, we never really do oranges, so I don't, I don't really know what colors to add. First thing I'm going to do, see if I can just make like an orange base, is red and yellow. So I'll try about, might need a little bit more yellow, but let's see how that goes. Okay, that works. <laughs> so this is the Vivid Diamond Orange from Black Diamond. That was way too much. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't have a lid you're putting your pigment into, you end up with too much. To make it all Halloween and spooky, we'll add some dark in there. This is gonna go in a separate bucket and then we're just gonna kinda use this to, to accent the main pour. Just a bit of that. <laughs> You fit. I know it looks like that calculation was done completely perfectly, but that was totally by luck. I actually just kind of rounded up and it looks like it happened to be just about the perfect amount. So now we're going to add a bit of this black through and we'll, it'll kind of end up swirling to make a bit of a different color afterwards. You can already see the epoxy kind of starting to convect and move in there. Um, maybe what we might do is maybe we'll leave a time lapse on this for like the first 20 minutes or something and just kind of show you the chemical reaction of the epoxy. Uh, but this won't be coming out of the mold till next week, so stay tuned for next week, uh, week's video to see how you can win this. And again, all you guys have to do is comment below. Well, it's Friday, so it is... Today we're actually going to be uploading this video, and it's the day after we did our pour. So check it out. Uh, as you can see from that time lapse, it did kind of change quite a bit from when we did the initial pour. But we will be, in next week's video, we will be cutting this to size, planing it, sanding it, and finishing it. And then we're going to be announcing the winner for, for this piece in that video. Um, next week as well, we will probably be showing you, if our resin shows up, we're going to show you the pour for JB Smooth's dining table. And we're also going to continue work on that, that 16 foot conference table. But again, next week's video is going to be a day early on Halloween. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like. Don't forget to comment so you can win this piece. And we'll catch you all next week. See ya.